Hello and welcome to the Student Hub Live. Well, my name is Karen Foley and I'm a lecturer at the OU and the presenter at Student Hub Live. And this is my home and uh, I've been in lockdown like the rest of you for what seems like an absolute eternity. And when we started this lockdown, we had to change so many of our different ways of working. And uh, it's given us loads of potential and opened up lots of new opportunities like some of the um, mental health workshops that we've been running um, in Adobe Connected Student Hub Live. Um, and I've been doing lots of different things and I can now broadcast from home and introduce you to my dog, which I never thought I'd be able to do. This is Megan. Um, so lots of positives as well. But it's been really, really tough for so many of us in a number of different ways. So today's an opportunity to get together and talk about some experience, talk to other OU students and meet some members of staff. I've got Michelle who's overseeing the chat today um, and she's going to be uh, taking care of lots of pictures. We've already had lots sent in, but uh, you can send things um, to us today. Hello, Michelle. And uh, we've got Mike. Good Batten morning, Karen. STEM. Hi, how are you? Hi. And we've got Mike from STEM. Hi, Mike. And we've got uh, Jenny Sanderson. Um, uh, and we're going to talk about positive well-being with Jenny. Um, and Mike has been Morning. making um, some uh, hand sanitizer. So he's going to tell us all about that. So uh, we've got lots to talk about today. So we hope you can feel a lot more connected and get together. And we've got lots of questions we'd like to um, talk to you about as well. So Michelle um, can uh, send pictures into the chat, uh, which is studenthub at open.ac.uk. Um, and Michelle, you've already had some pictures in, haven't you? I have had some pictures. So one of our students, Fanny, she sent in a picture of uh, her cooking and she's tried different things. She has tried cooking a roast dinner for the first time, a full roast dinner. Doesn't that look nice? I myself don't wow, eat yum. meat. So she humored me and cooked her very first vegan aubergine curry, which she said was delicious too. So she's trying out the whole spectrum. And then we've had uh, Gareth, who has lived in his house for five years and has never had time to look at his garden, do his garden. And so he's tidied up his garden. And I love that giant Connect Four in the corner there. Looks brilliant, doesn't it? Oh, that looks fantastic. And what a lovely way to have some space that uh, you can appreciate, you know, for a long, long time also. So that's brilliant. Excellent. So I also asked some of my colleagues about some um, things that we've done differently as a result of the lockdown. Um, and you might like to share some of the things also in the chat. Um, uh, so Michelle can tell us what you've been doing differently. Um, so I've got some pictures from some of my colleagues at work. And uh, George has been doing lots of baking and uh, she's made amazing Victoria sponges. This is a picture of it. And her children have also been busy. Um, they've been uh, doing Fancy Dress Friday um, and PE with Joe Wicks all at the same time there. They've been making bird pictures and uh, also like many of us George has been balancing um, working from home and looking after children as well so this is them uh, busy while we've been uh, in one of our meetings. Michelle what's one thing that you um, have done differently as a result of the lockdown or something that you never thought you'd do? I am a mad ice skater and normally I skate six days a week so was absolutely devastated when the rink closed and I had to grieve for that. So my coach has set up lessons online via Zoom and other obviously uh, software is available but that's the one he uses and so it's very embarrassing. I have him giant size on my television and he probably has me giant size on his uh, stretching and bending and twisting. <laughs> so, so quite embarrassing but really good to keep me moving. Oh, that's amazing. And amazing how versatile um, people can be as well when we, we can't do certain things. Mike, what's that's something right. you... Um, oh, sorry. Go on, Michelle. So that, that's right. A lot of people have had to adjust. And so I think if anybody wants to put in the chat box things that they've had to adjust because they're not able to go out, that'd be great to hear from you too. Yeah. And tell us what people at home are talking about right now as well, Michelle. Well, people are talking about, about brownies and people are talking about wishing they had had some breakfast before we started. We have Sarah, Margaret and Nicole, who is their first time on Student Hub Live, so welcome. We have Tala, who's in Kuwait, and quite a few people jumped when the music first started this morning. They weren't expecting that, so I think we've woken <laughs> them up, Karen. Oh, but this morning, I suddenly realised that I hadn't got any cake. So I, I made this lovely selection of cakes here um, very early and I was just madly icing them before we went on mm -hmm. air. So uh, <laughs> that's good. Mike, what's something that you never thought you'd do um, as a result of this lockdown? Have you, have you done anything new, opened up any new opportunities? Yes, I've uh, been attending two street parties with uh, all the neighbours. So I've got to know 
all the neighbors, all of their families, and find out what their children and their grown up children are all doing. Um, it's been really eye opening and, and fascinating. That sounds like lots of fun and, and what a lovely thing. Have you yeah. met people you didn't know before? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, people that you have just see and you, you sort of you wave to um, as you drive past, but you never actually speak to them. And so, yeah, it's, it's been been very enlightening. Has it been so much more emphasis on local in so many different senses, shopping local and being local and being kind to people? So, um, yeah, it's, it's really changed, I think, the way that we live in our communities. And uh, I've also asked some of my other colleagues um, about things they've been doing. Um, so some colleagues in Milton Keynes, I'm in West Wales at the moment. Actually, I should ask where everyone is. Um, but Mike, you're, uh, I know, in Milton Keynes. Um, and Michelle, you are pretty local to that area also. Um, but uh, some colleagues live directly opposite each other. So my colleague Helen has been having um, a socially distancing uh, cup of tea. Uh, there she is. And, and there's Jay in the background. So they've been having a natter over the street. Um, and they also do lots of baking and share things which actually inspired me to make these cakes and now I'm going to have to go and deliver them to people because there's no way I can eat all of those. So there's Helen off um, with her um, care package going on. Um, so they've been doing surprise suppers also. So uh, here's a Saturday supper surprise that they've been sharing and cooking together. Um, and my colleague Jay has also been doing fantastic things as well with our team. Um, she's been making cookies and delivering those to her friends. And uh, one of the things we've been doing is having these time for the team meetings, which I've been so thankful for. And again, these are things that I've never got to do is, is just spend half an hour talking to colleagues because they've all been so local at Milton Keynes and I haven't. So that's been really nice and, and much appreciated. Jenny, where are you in the country right now? And what have you been doing differently as a result of the lockdown? Well, I'm just down the road the other side of Cranfield from uh, from Milton Keynes, so not too far down the road. And uh, I think for me, mine's been very simple. It's been nice to uh, get my parents so uh, digitally uh, on board with uh, virtual Sunday dinners every Sunday, which has been lovely. So we just sit down, make sure we've cooked at the right time, which is quite difficult for my mum, but, but don't tell her I said that. Um, <laughs> uh, and have a FaceTime uh, dinner with them every Sunday, which has been really nice. And actually, it's something that we'll probably continue um, uh, even when lockdown is over. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, well, I ended up doing um, a 100 mile cycling event because I, well, a lot of us here love cycling, but um, I uh, did this Ryan's 100 for 100 and we raised 35 grand for the NHS, all cycling on our turbos um, in our back gardens and having a massive Zoom call. And uh, that was heaps of fun when it was over and um, I'm never doing that again. Uh, so, Michelle, what things have people said that they've done at home and uh, that they would never have done as a result of the lockdown? Well, Rachel has done karate grading online. So I think that's a really good adaptation and it means that the kids don't miss out on that grading opportunity. Leanne has taught her mum how to video chat and a few others have asked, well, can you teach my mum too? Uh, Mark is missing <laughs> his son. It's been a long time since he's seen his son. Uh, Lydia has watched some new programs that she hasn't seen before and that she might not have watched otherwise. And uh, Nicola has been attending virtual parties, but also she's been keeping a Corona or a COVID-19 diary. And uh, I've been doing that too every morning after my exercise, I do a quick diary and I'm hoping that I'll see some change in my physical fitness and the way that I look when, the, when I finish that diary, it's a little video diary. We've got uh, Katie from Manchester, Diana from Leeds, Audrey from Hereford, uh, Beverly from Yorkshire, Maria from Weymouth, and just a whole range of people from lots of different people, places, Karen's from Shropshire. So a really nice uh, uh, representation today. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so uh, we're going to talk um, to Tala a bit later, who's made a video. So I'm really pleased that Tala's in the chat today. And we've got people from all over the place. Um, and also, don't forget to send us pictures um, of things you've been doing or where you're at or how you're watching today's show or your um, study buddy um, or anything like that to studenthub at open.ac.uk. And Michelle can print it off and hold up. Um, so that would be fantastic to see um, some of the things if you'd like to send us those. So I wanted to talk to you, Mike, first, because um, you're a laboratory manager at the OU um, and many people actually don't know that we have real labs. Um, so you're in charge of some pretty amazing kit, both physically and virtually. Um, and some of the students may recognise you from the Magic of Chemistry um, show that we did at Student Hub Live and that, that you do on tour as well around the, um, around the country. 
But tell us a little bit about the labs and, and how you're managing them at, at the OU in Milton Keynes. OK, a lot of people don't realise that uh, we have uh, a number of different laboratories. We have um, chemistry laboratories, we have biology laboratories, uh, we have um, earth science laboratories, we have physics, we have ecology, a whole wide range of different laboratories um, on the Milton Keynes Walton Hall site. And there are a number of laboratory managers. Um, my interest is in face-to-face uh, -face teaching and remote experiments. Um, but we also um, have chemistry, biology, physics, the, the whole wide range of, of different subjects. And some of the laboratories are conventional and some of them are outside. So we have uh, experiments growing plants, for instance, and we also have remote uh, observatory. So we uh, can access uh, telescopes in Tenerife, for instance. It's amazing. We'll talk a bit more Thanks. about that because many people can access some of those things. So uh, we're going to give you some yes. ideas at the end of the show about things that people can do. But you had had that the local hospital had had their hand sanitizer stolen. Um, and so you decided to do something about it. Tell us what happened. Yes. So um, um, a few days before I decided I couldn't get any hand sanitizer. So somebody sent me um, a recipe from the World Health um, Organization, and it's downloadable, anyone can access it. And um, so I downloaded it and I made a small batch for myself. And I told my boss, Julia Barkins, and she told me about the hand sanitizer being stolen. So we decided to get a group of us from different departments um, to form a team, which I call the dream team. And <laughs> on Monday the 23rd, here's the dream team. And you can see uh, myself and Lily and Tom and Brett uh, in the picture here. And we decided that we were going to make some hand sanitizer for Milton Keynes Hospital. And we also had one other person, uh, Liz the labeler, and uh, she made the labels for the bottles. So that was quite go. a production That's line, cool. wasn't it, Mike? And you had to get all yes. of the chemicals from the various different departments in the university. Why was that? And, and how did you do it? Well, again, this, this is um, how we can communicate with Skype um, and Microsoft Teams that we were able, I was actually working at home on the Friday, but I was able to communicate with um, Tom and he uh, organized the isopropyl alcohol and Brett organized the glycerol. And I had the um, hydrogen peroxide because this is one of the chemicals that I use. So here's Brett pouring the isopropyl alcohol and you can see it's a glass uh, bottle and the yellow uh, thing at the uh, near the bottom is the magnetic stirrer. So we were able to use a magnetic stirrer to mix all the ingredients together. Wow. Our next picture Amazing. Is, is Lily pour, pouring the glycerol, as you can see. She's a, a very proficient scientist. You can see she's labeled the measuring cylinder. You can see GLY, so we know it's the glycerol one. And here's Tom doing the bottling. So we transferred the uh, hand sanitizer from the glass into this um, bottle with a tap. We call it a carboy. And um, you can see Tom is uh, uh, decanting it into the, the different bottles. So it, during the day, we made uh, three batches of uh, 10 liters and each bottle has 500 mils. So we made 60 bottles. Wow. And what did the hospital say? And how, how did they trust that, you know, I mean, it must be uh, require a lot of trust in somebody saying, here, use this, you know, as a, a preventative. Um, so, so how did that, how did it, how was it received? Well, again, um, this, this is where contacts, the, the Open University has worked very closely. Some of our research projects with Milton Keynes Hospital. So we know the staff there and they know ours. So there's a degree of trust. And we obviously told them how we manufactured it 
and obviously you have to use high purity chemicals uh, and this is why it's probably not a good idea to try and make this at home. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes, yes. Well, well done. That, that's brilliant. And uh, we'll find out a bit more about the Open STEM Labs and how people can engage with some of those um, things as well. Michelle, how's everyone doing at home? Mm -hmm. I think your mic's off, Michelle. <laughs> rookie error rookie error i was trying to be so good oh, we lost um, all of it. <laughs> the reason i was in the ch in mute is because i've had this wonderful picture from sarah this is oh. her uh, son and she's gone out and this is where she exercises five minutes from her home doesn't that look lovely so thank you for sending that wow. in and there's a lot of love for mike in the chat and for the work that he's done people are very impressed by that so uh you know, allison says such a brilliant effort and people are proud to be affiliated with the OU when they hear about these kinds of, of things. So it's really good. And I just wanted to share with you too, Karen, we talked about this last week. My husband made some masks uh, with HEPA filters. He's an OU student and an OU staff member and made these masks. We distributed them to the local police and uh, delivery people and a few doctors as well. So it's great that so many people are putting in such a, a nice effort to support one another. No, and I've absolutely. got one final, one final comment. Yeah, one final comment is, uh, uh, apologies, I've just lost. Uh, Rachel. Rachel has asked a question to everyone and I have put our thinking caps on here. She has a profoundly uh, deaf relative and they're thinking about ways to do things online that are visual. So she just asked people, do you have any games or any ideas or things that they can do uh, online with in isolation when it's really difficult if you're not hearing? So any ideas or suggestions would be greatly uh, received. That's fantastic. Also, um, there is a society as well. There are lots of clubs and societies at the Open University. And if you go onto the USA website, you can find out about those. But there's a disabled students group um, who have a Facebook page and they are so imaginative and helpful and wonderful. And I bet they would love um, a challenge question like that and could probably come up with some really good suggestions also. Actually, one of the things I forgot to show you earlier about my colleagues, I don't know whether we can find those pictures still, um, is, is some of my colleagues have been sewing scrubs as well for the NHS. Um, so one of my colleague Sarah made these um, fantastic uh, outfits. You can see her here working at her sewing machine at home. And uh, yeah, they were really, really gratefully received because again, this has been a massive problem. So it's incredible how people have been going out. So with you in the mask, Sarah with the scrub, Mike with the hand sanitizer, it's amazing. And actually something I nicked off uh, my colleague Rebecca um, was her daughter hosted a cinema night and dressed up um, and made a ticket and screenings and things like that for the family. And they were watching the, the live streamed events and things. Um, so that that was super um, to have there and uh, we might get a picture of that uh, of, of uh, Ella showing the uh, cinema um, thing and in, in a little bit later. Um, so you've also had some pictures from Michelle uh, from Patrice and Matt Michelle I think to show us. I certainly have and I think we're going to go to Matt first. So Matt's a student at the OU and uh, he has an electric car and unfortunately during lockdown he was only able to go to the supermarket once per week so the car battery uh, was not very happy with that. He had to get a replacement one, had to go to a wholesaler, had to prove that he was an essential worker because he volunteers as part of the judiciary and uh, he only broke one part while fitting it which he's very proud about. He's bent a wire coat hanger which is holding the new one firmly in place until he can actually get the car serviced. So brilliant to see Matt doing that. We love Matt. He's such a great very student. Clever. And the, <laughs> very clever all around. And then from Patrice, um, Patrice openly talks about um, struggling with anxiety. And so she's been trying some healthy eating and she made some sourdough starter, which you see here. And you might think, oh, great sourdough bread. Oh, no, she took it to a higher level. Sourdough pizza. Doesn't that look good, Karen? Oh. That looks amazing. I've heard so many people doing sourdough. I think I must, I must get on the case with that. Although Mike and I were talking the other day and I've been so, I feel awful because I do own some yeast and some flour and I haven't had any time to, to make any bread. I've just been so phenomenally busy with work. It's just been ridiculous. And I, I look at people who are making these wonderful concoctions and I'm so jealous. It was hard enough to make these cakes actually. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, um, <laughs> so that's my good deed for this. In fact, um, oh, my little cake thief. <laughs> <laughs> the cakes are gone and it wasn't, wasn't even me, Karen. Normally I'm the one stealing your cakes. 
Well, yes, but um, yes, this has actually been one of the things is that uh, now it's completely cool to have kids in your house, whereas normally what happens is you're in an important meeting. Can I have an ice cream, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning or something? <laughs> but now it's fine to go, you know, all right, maybe have a few of those, darling, and then put them back. please. <laughs> <laughs> I have promised them to people. <laughs> okay. Um, well, somebody who's been in the chat today, Tala, has made us a video, which is wonderful. We always love contributions from people. It's so nice to hear a little bit about everyone's lives. Student Hub Live is all about creating an academic community, sharing advice and new skills. And Tala's been to almost all of our workshops, I think, um, and she's in Kuwait, and she's made a fab video. So I'm going to show that to find a bit more about Tala, um, and then we're going to be coming back and talking to Jenny. Let's see what Tala had to, to share with us. Hi everyone, my name is Tala. I'm usually in bright pink in the Student Hub Live chats, but today I'm speaking so I would just like to quickly introduce myself before moving on with this presentation. I am a 20-year-old first-year health sciences student. I'm finishing up my first year in eight days, which is quite exciting. And I'm originally from Lebanon, but I've lived in Kuwait most of my life, which makes me quite an international student. Now that comes with a couple differences, including the fact that I cannot attend day schools or live events just because I am not in the UK or anywhere near where these events are held. I also have less face-to-face -face interactions with other OU students as usually it's hard to find international OU students living in the same country. It's quite rare. Um, but the best part is that the OU is made up of distance learners so they've done a great job to provide online alternatives so that we don't miss out on too much anyway the reason why i'm here today is to share two quarantine tips and two study tips with you that have helped me recently in hopes to help somebody else so let's get started with tip number one my first study tip is time management and what i mean by that is making a note of what is due when whether it be TMAs, EMAs, exams, or meetings, it's very important to have everything laid out in front of you so you can work accordingly. This level of organization reduces the stress you're likely to experience around those deadlines. I prefer using my wall calendar and also my calendar on my laptop because it sends me regular reminders. My second study tip is make your notes look as nice, neat, and organized as possible. I like using colors because I feel like having colorful notes makes me more likely to remember what I'm studying. Having appealing notes means that you're more motivated and more likely to want to study, and that is always a good thing, particularly with everything that's going on right now and the lack of motivation most people are experiencing. Speaking of everything that's going on, if you're feeling meh about all this or you feel like you're losing the will to live, I just want to let you know that you are not alone and that I'm here to share two quarantine tips that have helped me survive so far. My first quarantine tip is hobbies. Having hobbies is very important due to the fact that they keep your hands and mind busy, which means that you have less time to think or more specifically overthink and therefore you stress out less which is both good for your mental health and your physical health. Some of my favorite hobbies are art and photography and I've been filling up all my spare time by trying to develop these skills when I'm not studying. I also enjoy baking but I cannot decide whether I like it because of the process of baking or whether I just like eating the yummy treats that I make while procrastinating. But anyway, that's a different conversation for a different time. Moving on to quarantine tip number two, it is very important to stay connected. Usually people are likely to feel like they're alone and like they have nobody to talk to when they're stressed. So you can imagine how, how much that is amplified when it's a worldwide pandemic. But I'm here to remind you that there are people who want to support you. There are people who are out there to listen and it's easy to find them if you look in the right places. Some of those places include Student Hub Live sessions or the OU Students Association weekly chats or even social media. But when you use social media, remember that we are bakers. 
Now I know you are probably so fed up with me bringing baking into everything, but let me explain what I mean by social media bakers. The B stands for big hearted, A for attentive, K for kind, E for empathetic, R for respectful, and S for supportive. And it's very important to remember these six simple adjectives when communicating with people online as they will help you avoid misunderstandings and accidentally hurting people. If you think about it, it makes sense because when you're baking, what you create usually makes people happy. So why not transfer that happiness into something bigger like social media? So let's spread happiness by being social media bakers. And the reason why I brought baking into this is baking and food seem to be quite common conversations right now. So I thought this would make this easier to remember. Now, I think you'll be glad to hear that my presentation is over so you don't have to listen to me anymore. But I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this. And I thought I'd include a quick bonus tip, which is stay hydrated. Your body will thank you for it later. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the session and have a wonderful day. Oh, thank you so much, Tala. Wasn't that just absolutely fantastic? Do you know that Tala made that all on her own, completely the whole thing. She wrote it all and uh, created it for us using all of her own images and uh, music that was sourced. So you did an amazing job. Thank you, Tala. I knew there was a reason why I had been compelled to find some time to do some baking myself today. So thank you. And uh, Tala will um, no doubt tell you that we have uh, online workshops, which are really super friendly. Those are a bit different to today because I know there's some new people. And in those, what we do is we focus on particular skills. So we've been focusing a lot on study skills but this whole situation has brought to light this idea that you know it's study skills are one thing but also supporting good mental health is, is yet another skill that we can actually do something about so Jenny I'm going to talk, be talking to me in a minute about those because she's going to be involved in those sessions so this is a nice way to introduce her but before we do that I just wanted to have a little reflect as a group about um, some of the things that had changed um, and one of my colleagues George she said this thing in one of our chats our tea time chats which I said that's a quote and she said we've learned Learn the things we miss and the things that we don't really need. And I think that that's so true and it's given us an opportunity. Um, and I know we've been talking a little bit about things that we hope never you know, change, like Jenny was talking about the Sunday lunches and continuing all of that. So what's the one thing that you never hope will change back, Jenny? Well, for me, it's, I'm also a cyclist. I'm following in, in quite a lot of our guests' uh, footsteps today. But um, for me, getting out on the bike has been amazing to watch how many other people and how many families have been outdoors and enjoying uh, the fresh air and the exercise. Um, there's been so many more people on bikes and walking around. It's just been amazing. And I really, really, really hope that um, people continue to do that when we're, when we're allowed uh, back out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Nothing like being on the bike. Um, Michelle, what about you? What's, what, what's one thing you hope never changes back? Well, I'm the same. I love cycling. I love being outside. And I've noticed so many more birds. And that's whether they're coming into the garden, whether they're flying overhead, or my friend has uh, baby robins in her garden that have hatched in there this past weekend. So I hope that we get to continue to really embrace nature and really maybe have more silence and less traffic. Hmm. No, absolutely. Well, I've been having um, Zoom parties with my friends, with, actually with my cycling club, and we um, make little goodie bags, party bags for each other that include alcohol and homemade things and um, snacks and little funny things in them. Um, and uh, we cycle them around to each other's houses and then we all log on and open them and, and have a drink together and a chat. And, um, and it's just gone to show me that, you know, sometimes social events don't necessarily have to be big. You can have just a couple of hours doing something in the comfort of your own home that's heaps and heaps of fun. So I hope we continue to, to use Zoom and, and that sort of thing more. Mike, what do you hope will um, never change back? Oh, you've, you've, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, and another beginner's uh, problem there. So That's right. I'm, I'm actually hoping... not muting mine, which is the only reason I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that we will uh, stop hunting animals and selling them live for eating. Um, I think we need to take biosecurity absolutely serious. I mean, you think about how much money and effort we spend to prevent terrorism, 
I think we now need to seriously think about biosecurity and preventing this type of pandemic ever happening again. Mm. I know it's a bit of a downer, but uh, it's, <laughs> I think it needs, it needs to be thought about. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm bringing yeah. to question the extent to which we need to rely on certain products and even from where they're sourced. Yeah. And, you know, I think so much um, local shopping and really appreciating things in season as well. Um, things taste better and, uh, you know, are so much nicer as well when they're locally sourced. Um, but no, I agree. This is this has raised huge issues as well. So, uh, yeah, Michelle, you've got some pictures to show us. Let's see what people have been uh, sending. I you. do. Uh, well, actually, while Student Hub Live is going on, and I love this for multiple reasons, Clotilda is in the kitchen baking, making pancakes exactly. while we are watching Ooh. today. And I love her name, Clotilda. I've never heard it before. So she's put a little explanation of that in the uh, chat box. And then probably my favorite of all time topic, pets. We have Alison with her <laughs> study buddies. Aren't they oh, beautiful? Oh, they are gorgeous. Oh, I know, oh, absolutely. Really and then you'll, appreciate, oh. you'll appreciate this, Karen. This is Leanne's oh. study oh, buddy. Yes. <laughs> and then here's oh, one for uh, me and Mike. This is Min has uh, sent her cat in. And of course, oh. that leads me, Karen, oh, onto my beautiful study buddy Gary oh, who just sits Gary. next to he's still asleep I've just picked him up he's still me. fast asleep I know Megan just I know. <laughs> there we go it's thanks. a hard life being an animal isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it is. So th and I just want to also give a shout out. This is my last point, Karen. I want to give a shout out yeah. to Tala because we've had so much love for her video there. Diane, Svenja, Nicola, Caroline, Louise, Beverly, Karen, all loved the video and are still talking about it in the chat box. Uh, so many good tips and tricks in there and really well appreciated from Tala. Oh, good. See, that's wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, Jenny, how's your connection doing at the minute? It's, it's to expect it's uh, my daughter wanting to be on Netflix or something like that. So uh, I've, I've sent them a nice message saying, come on, leave me to get on with it. So uh, <laughs> fingers crossed it'll improve. Oh, brilliant. The joy All right. of well, thank you. So happens at home. I know. I keep being envious of these people who know how to turn the Wi-Fi off to, to break it and various <laughs> things like this. I can just never quite control the, the various things because I normally need to be on the computer for something. So <laughs> it'd be great if we could localise yeah. or prioritise these things. Um, but Jenny, thanks for joining us. Um, you're a positive psychology coach and you're also going to be doing some Student Hub Live workshops with us, which is just wonderful. And again, the, the reason Jenny and I met was because Jenny's been doing some work at the OU and I became really aware that through some of this, um, students were really struggling. So we got connected through a colleague, Anastasia, and you're going to come along and, and help deliver some of the bulk of our um, well-being workshops. Um, so how have you seen people reacting to this situation? Well, this it's lockdown. gone through stages, really. Um, three st just, just wave at me if I if I'm talking over you because the, the connection is a bit poor here and there. But um, effectively, at the beginning, there's massive amount of anxiety, and the problem is with anxiety is it just takes over the emotional brain, which means that we're not very logical. Uh, we sit down at our desk and we're thinking too much um, rather than doing. And so uh, at the beginning, there was a lot of anxiety around actually performing when we're working from home and getting things done. Lots of procrastination uh, and lots of people not really coping with the, the lack of control that was going on. But as uh, time's gone on, although the anxiety is still there, um, people have found ways to cope, as we've seen from our students. And, and you know, I'd like to add my my two pennies worth to uh, Tala's uh, video. That was excellent. I'm not sure you need me, to be honest. I think that was uh, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's fab. I mean. Is it like that? Do you think we are getting better? I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing all right. I think, yep, we're nailing the homeschooling. We're we're OK. And then the next five minutes later, it just I'm just in bits again. It's difficult to concentrate. I can feel really anxious and I just tend to get waves of it myself going on. Um, do you think that there is a sense of, of difference in that? Or do you think or is everyone just doing better? <laughs>
Not sure if we've still got Jenny there. If her connection. Oh, have done, you still sorry. got me? Have we we have. I have. Yes. Ah, yes. No, <laughs> it's fine. Um, there are certain things out of our been... control, Jenny, and that's okay. I didn't hear any of it. Can you go again? That's fine. Um, I... Oh, I'm not sure if we've got Jenny there or not. If I can actually, as our emotional She's... brain takes over. Tell me again. Yeah. Yeah, we're losing you. Um, and uh, But I think I think I got what you said. And I'm not sure whether refreshing the screen might help or not. But um, I think you were talking about um, uh, the way that we sort of our evolutionary uh, drives mean that uh, sometimes our um, brain can go into overload and we can end up feeling very anxious about things. Um, so I'm not sure whether it was uh, whether it was that or not, Jenny. Yeah, effectively, I'm trying to say that we all we all suffer from a condition of this or, or, of anxiety and when we're stuck in one place um when out there's very little escape from it um we can feel like we're a little bit overwhelmed and, and out of control so a lot of people yeah. have been uh, finding ways to regain their control and focus on the things that they can control rather than the things out of their control and that's the important thing yeah. to concentrate on focus on the things you can control and try although it's hard um to let go of the things that you that, that you struggle with the control yeah people have I mean, also been finding things... new ways to connect sorry I'm interrupting you <laughs> no you're fine. Said, um... go for it while your signal's good <laughs> i was just People are also finding lots of new ways to connect, as we've already discovered. You're having Zoom parties. Mike's having street parties. Uh, there's a lot of party atmosphere going on. I, I know I've been a, a, a around lots of people having quizzes. Um, and uh, I think that people are starting to realise the importance of that social connection, which I, you know, I really hope that um, we can carry that on as well um, uh, when, uh, when lockdown is over. Yeah. Now, one of the areas that you do focus on, Jenny, is um, uh, I know we've got some questions as well uh, to cover. In fact, Michelle, let's let's see what your question is first. Yes. So we have Nicola, who's just said she's a bit concerned about once the lockdown's lifted, going out and overcoming anxiety. So somebody in the chat box has said her mental health has improved in lockdown and people are worried about what's going to happen when they get to go out again. Yeah, and I think that it is a really good question. And I suspect that everybody on this call is feeling the same way. Um, and um, I'm pretty sure that um, Boris's message last night didn't really do anything to help that, to be honest. Um, so I think um, being it's OK not to feel OK about the situation. I think that's a really important message. Don't feel like you have to do anything or that you have to feel OK about what we're told to do. Um, I'm kind of um, me and my husband, for example, have been talking about what our own rules within the rules will be, um, because, you know, once we're allowed out um, back to work, for example, do I want to do that? Where are my comfort zones? What what, what boundaries do I want to make within that that uh, gives me uh, less anxiety and allows me to actually feel like I'm comfortable in that space again? So I think, you know, I think you are not alone in that anxiety. Um, and uh, because we don't have uh, fixed answers from the government or from necessarily our employ employers, etc., then I think uh, start to work out what your own boundaries are um, so that you can feel a little bit more comfortable when um, when the rules are changed. Seems like there's an awful lot about thinking about control and, and the extent to which we do and are able to exercise control and the extent to which we're also constrained by rules and regulations and also social pressure to do certain things as well. Are there any tips or um, self-help things that uh, might help people sort of factor things in and out of control, particularly if they're feeling overwhelmed by things or maybe are too busy to actually spend time thinking about, you know, how they might feel better? Yeah, I mean, when you're feeling overwhelmed, one of my biggest um, pieces of advice is to note everything that's going down, going on um, at the moment down. So actually get a piece of paper and a pen. Um, one of the biggest things that I like to say is the, the best way to get information from your head to your heart or the other way around is through your hands. So writing things down, um, write down everything that's going on and then read through that list and actually circle the things that you have control of and the things um, and, and 
and concentrate on the next steps and the next actions within those uh, things that you can control. Um, because then you're actually giving yourself some purpose, some intention and some goals to work on towards the things that you can control. So that's one good way. Other good ways um, of helping yourself is making sure that you have structure, which is always very difficult, especially um, at the situation where you've got um, partners, children. I, I was saying to the, to the guys before we came live that I came back to my desk uh, this morning ready for this call to see that my daughter had kindly um, illustrated over all of my notes <laughs> for this call. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was in my control, but as clearly it's not. So um, <laughs> I had to frantically rewrite all my notes, which obviously sent my anxiety level through the roof. But the, the, the point being is that we can put some structure in place. I know that um, Karen said that uh, the Pomodoro method is quite a popular one within uh, Student yeah. Hub Live. So that's a really great one. 25 minutes of pure, um, pure activity, five minutes, five minute break, 25 minutes on five minute break. It's a really good way of keeping yourself focused for that amount of time. Eat fresh, get fresh air, move. And I think I like the word move because it doesn't mean that um, people who don't, don't like a lot of um, vigorous exercise uh, can feel like they're included. So make sure you get up from your desk and move around a lot. Um, it promotes really, really good hormones uh, response and helps just get rid of those stress hormones within your blood. Um, within your body, sorry, and uh, and helps you reset. So there's lots of different things. And also, lastly, find your boundaries. Um, obviously, I've got a four year old. And obviously, clearly, as you can see, your boundary, my boundaries <laughs> are good enough for a four year old. Um, but if you have partners that like to um, or, 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 or people who you live with who like to just come in and chat with you, make sure you're clear about what your boundaries are and switch off at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So how do we do that? Because that's one of the hardest things, I think, sometimes when you're not sure where work starts and ends. What do you do, Jenny, to sort of trash off? Well, it's a good question. And I think it depends on the, d the day, what kind of uh, things I've got going on. Um, but for me, I mean, I've got quite clear uh, uh, things that I need to do. I have to cook for my, for my daughter and my husband. Um, he does it quite a lot of the time, but I, um, uh, but I try to actually utilize that time for me to say, right, it's now my time to stop working and to go and um, get, get ready for dinner. Um, I try to switch my phone off where I can or leave it upstairs. If I don't feel that I'm in a place where I can, I can switch it off. Um, I try to limit my, uh, calls, uh, my video calls during the day, because I do find them exhausting. Um, and also, uh, I do try where I can to get outside as much as I possibly can. Fresh air is a massive regenerator for me. Um, but everybody needs to find their own boundaries and find their ways to um, switch off from work and return to them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Michelle, I hear people are commenting a lot um, on the stuff Jenny's been saying. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Nicola has said, thank you. Good tips from Jenny. Deborah has said, and I think this is really important. She's glad that she's not alone when when reading what people are saying in the chat box and when listening to Jenny, it's nice to know that actually everybody else is feeling something similar. Grace has said that she uh, is going through the emotions and up and down, up and down. And Sarah said, well, it's the Corona coaster. And I like that term actually about the yeah. Corona coaster. So yeah, those are the comments that we've had coming in and uh, a really positive re response to what Jenny's had to say. Uh, I've got one one last story to share with you. This is actually a picture that has come in and uh, let me just make sure I've got the right details here for you. So this is from Svenja and this is a lovely picture here and she was, took a care of a woman with Alzheimer's over the last few months and the woman couldn't do any of the cleaning herself so she cleaned and when she cleaned the balcony she found this pigeon family with babies who didn't fly yet but now they fly and they come and uh, go to Svenja's balcony door and watch her studies and she thinks that she's their alternative mum so I think that's a Aww. lovely story and <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> That's really lovely. That's wonderful. Jenny, were there any other things that you wanted to share with us in terms of tips? We've covered an awful lot. Yeah, I think there was a couple of things. Um, one, uh, one of the tips that um, I've been giving a lot of the teams and the individuals that I'm working with who are starting to get frustrated with the communications, et cetera, with other people when, you know, you know, when we're tired and we get that email and we're not in quite sure how to, um, how to actually receive it because it's written, you know, someone's obviously just written really quickly. They've shot off the email and you're not in the right mood to actually receive it. So you read it all wrong. And I think, um, 
people are starting to get a little bit upset about that, sending, shooting off an email back and, and all of a sudden you've got a conflict. So one of the um, top bits of advice is around being mindful of your communications. So I, I, I'll draw a little picture if that's okay. But okay, um, yeah, brilliant. What, happens, what happens is that we, we, we forget that there's things going on for everyone. And as we've just discussed, you know, it's, it's okay not to feel okay. And we're not always sure how people are coping. There are some people who are doing really well during this lockdown, and there are some people who are really struggling. So I've drawn this little diagram, and as you can see, it's a bit of a wiggly line. And I think <laughs> my reminder to people is that what we see is the straight line here. We see this from people. What's going on behind closed doors is this and we don't know what's going on. So when you're thinking about responding, what I want you to do is just think, what else might be going on for that person for them to have sent that kind of response? What else might be going on? And then before you respond. And I think that that's quite a helpful um, uh, helpful tip. And, and the last tip is find moments of joy in your day. Positive emotions are really important. And it's not about positive thinking. It's about finding those little five minute and 10 minute snippets of things that you can do that really, really bring you joy, peace, or any kind of positive emotion and plan to do them. Wake up in the morning and think, what three things can I do that will bring me joy today? Oh, that's a lovely idea. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm going to start doing that because, uh, yeah, sometimes you inadvertently find them. And often when I'm doing, you know, a run or a cycle or something, I do feel really, really happy. But, yeah, it's about prioritising and building those in. And also, I guess, once you know that something does make you happy, really appreciating and looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. and well, thank you'll you, find that the workshop that we're doing, um, the workshop that we're looking to do in a couple of days is around about personal well-being recipe. And that's a big key in that. Do you, want to, do you want to tell us briefly what that workshop's going to be about, Jenny? Because some people might like to come and attend that. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so basically, um, I'm, I, so as a positive psychology, uh, po I'll put my teeth in. Um, <laughs> as a positive psychology, um, I study the, human, uh, the science of human flourishing. So rather than looking at what's wrong, we look at what's right. So um, in that workshop, what I'm going to help people understand is the elements that you can put together to help you build your own personal well-being recipe. So you can start to learn what really works for you as an individual to help you feel better. Um, so you can start building a little bit of recipe because we've been talking about a lot of cakes. Um, so your own cake wellbeing recipe uh, of all the different things um, from science that you can do to help you um, improve your wellbeing. Brilliant, excellent. And we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about those and you can find and book your place on those at the Student Hub Live website. As I said earlier, um, they're in a different sort of format to this. They're in Adobe Connect. There's still lots of chat and talk and slides and stuff going. So um, yeah, we, we hope you can uh, join us for those as well. So um, I wanted to fill you in on a few bits and bobs that may be useful or interesting because um, as we know with the OU, um, there's always so much more um, to what we think of the Open University as being. And um, one of the things I wanted to flag up was um, about OpenLearn, which is basically the OU's free um, content. And some students, in particular, if you've had um, maybe an EMA cancelled, um, you know, you might be looking for something else to do. So here you can see um, the website, loads and loads of stuff. You can see that there's courses um, and all sorts of things. They tell you about how long they take, what sort of level they're at, and there's heaps of interesting and relevant sort of stuff here as well. And um, it's no surprise that the numbers, that, well, the hits to the website have like quadrupled um, since the lockdown. And we've been doing lots of things at the OU to, um, to make those better. Um, so some of them have been selected, some of the courses that we looked at there um, have been selected um, on uh, advice from experts and leading employers as well. So people are looking at how we can actually start upskilling for the change in workforce um, and uh, difference in jobs, etc. that are going to happen as a result of this lockdown. So we've been working with the government as well, um, who say it's just a first step to assisting with the longer term recovery. Um, but again, it's about building up key skills. So do take a look at that. And I bet there's, al there's always something interesting there that you can take a look at. So here's the skills toolkit. Um, and uh, it's a great way to, um, to start looking at uh, developing your skills. And again, these are all free and they're open to everybody. You don't have to be an OU student. So if you know somebody who may have a bit of time on their hands um, and is annoying you, you could send them in this direction and they could start upskilling or just learn about something that's really inspiring them like psychology or criminology or um, or anything 
There's also um, a section on coronavirus and mental health, um, which has got some good articles and uh, advice about uh, what to do, for example, about your mental health, what to do if you're having panic attacks and stress and anxiety. So Jenny was talking a little bit more about those. Um, so here you can see um, on the Open Learn website um, that uh, there are various articles you can look at. So it's not just about courses, um, but these articles and tips, etc., cetera, um, can be really, really helpful, particularly um, if you're unclear about things. So even just things like what it is and, you know, what is a virus, etc. Really useful stuff that you can learn in bite sized chunks. We've also been developing some new courses um, as well. So one of them, because again of this whole lockdown, um, counselling has spiked through the roof. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, Andreas Vossler and Naomi Muller, who are um, in our counselling and psychology department at the Open University did, was uh, they developed a course called How to Do Counselling Online. So this was aimed at anybody who was in a counselling situation who then wanted to transfer their practice to an online environment. Um, so this was launched by the Open University's Open Learn Create platform. And there have been 5,000 visitors already doing the course um, and you get a badge of completion. And so this is great for um, continuous professional development, for example. But again, that's something that uh, anybody can do. Um, then we've had a look at the government's tools kit as well. But there's something that uh, we were talking about earlier. So I think, Michelle, you were saying you were doing a diary and some other students are saying that they're doing a diary. Well, there is this Enquire um, initiative, which is uh, called uh, COVID-19 and You. So you can see here again on the Open Learn website. And all this is about is about how the pandemic is affecting your day to day life. So it's a partnership between the OU and the Young Foundation. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to capture the social impact um, of the coronavirus on individuals and also communities um, across the UK. So it's a sort of citizen science type thing whereby anybody, any adult um, can uh, sign up and share their day to day or real time experiences um, with a team of social researchers. So if you're interested in sharing your contributions and how you've uh, experienced um, the pandemic, then by all means, do check out that uh, the website um, Michelle will put in the chat. It's enquire.org.uk. Um, so you can take a look and um, I'm sure we'd be really, really happy to uh, have you signed up. The last thing I wanted to talk about, um, because there's been so much, so you can look at all of this on the Open Learn website, um, but some of our colleagues in the Knowledge Media Institute, they're the guys who developed this interface that we're actually looking at now, um, have also been working on an immunity app. So some of the stuff that we do at the OU um, is all about uh, generating new things in response to situations. And uh, what they've been doing is looking at um, the, words for the world's first digital application to certify COVID-19 immunity tests. So we can see um, a picture here which has got the um, uh the, the various stages um, that people will go through. So they're, they're having a holder ID check and then an antibody test and an immunity certificate ensured as well there. Um, but it's a prototype mobile phone app and um, basically is um, verification of tamper-proof coronavirus results and also having a certificate. So there's been a lot of issues around all of this sort of thing with um, you know knowledge, access to knowledge, um, and also how we might then go about certifying immunity. Um, so they've been developing that which is really super exciting. Well that unfortunately is all we have time for today. So quick trip back to Michelle, how's everyone at home found it? Oh it's been fantastic Karen, we've had so many great comments in the chat box, people supporting one another, we're really interested in what Mike had to say, buoyed up by some of the tips and tricks that Jenny's passed on to us. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Tala, she was brilliant brilliant in the chat box, motivating, inspiring, and we love that video clip. And also to everybody who sent their pictures in, we love seeing what you're doing at home. We love your pets and your study buddies. We really couldn't study without our study buddies, could we? And finally, just thanks to all the new people who've joined us today, never been in Student Hub Live before. Hope they loved it as much as we do and hope they're addicted and come back soon. So thanks very much, Karen. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you, Michelle. And for those of you who've signed up already for our workshops, we're looking forward to seeing you there. But if you haven't, visit the Student Hub Live website where you'll find out all about the uh, workshops on positive well-being with Jenny that we've got coming up. And we've got some there to support those students who have remote exams. So sign up for your workshop place because those are limited. They're in a slightly different format to this today, but they're heaps of fun and another great opportunity to talk to other students.
So that's all we've got time for today. I'd just like to officially thank my guests. We had Jenny Sanderson, Mike Batham, Michelle Pride, of course, and the video that Tala sent in and our production team behind the scenes. We've had Kerry and Paula, Anastasia and Alan. And that just leaves me to go off and enjoy the rest of my day. So I hope to see you at our next event very soon. Bye for now. Mm. Our Student Hub Live Skills Workshops are held in the same online rooms as OU Tutorials. These extracurricular, non-modular workshops offer an hour of structured skill development and we focus on a different aspect of study in each session. We begin with some information about the subject and then we invite you to apply that to your own learning through anonymous polls, text boxes and also in the chat box. We work through some prepared examples as a group and you can chat to each other and ask questions while we go through those. And then you'll break into smaller groups to give you an opportunity to share your ideas with other students and hear about the different ways people plan to apply their new skills to their study. You can find our workshop outlines on our website and you can catch up on recordings of the previous sessions there too. Coming along in person is ideal though, so let me fill you in on how the sessions work and what to expect. The Adobe Connect room opens 15 minutes before the session starts to allow you to log in and familiarise yourself with the setup. It's also a good opportunity to adjust your audio levels. And we begin sessions promptly and there's a lot to cover, often with a lot of people attending. You don't need any special equipment and you can access the room from any device, including a mobile phone. You can take part as little or as fully as you'd like to, but I will say that the more you put in, the more you'll get out. Some people just prefer to listen and others like to chat, but there's no pressure to interact if you don't want to. You don't need to prepare anything in advance and it's handy to have a pen and paper there with you too. Student Hub Live is for all students at any level and we offer generic, not module specific advice. And many students say that, as well as the skills we teach, mixing with other students and academics from different disciplines is valuable because they get a chance to experience new perspectives and different ways of looking at things. It can be so reassuring to find out that you aren't the only one with a question about something and that others are experiencing things in the same way you are. Space is limited in the skills workshops, so you'll need to reserve your spot via Eventbrite. If you can't make it, please cancel your ticket though so that we can offer it to someone else on our waiting list. Visit our website to find out more and I hope you can join me at one of our sessions soon.